Good morning, Internet. Now for something completely different, as Money Python so aptly put it. I apologize to all of my coding fans. I'm going to stray a little bit into the physical world. Here's something that I've been tinkering with lately. I thought I would put up a post in spirit of the blog, which is uh, helping yourself and DIY knowledge, kind of spreading the wealth around type thing. So this is Finite Element Methods Magnetics FEM. This is a freeware program. It runs from Windows 2000 all the way through current versions. It also runs very well under Wine. I happen to be working on Mac OS 10.11, so I'm running it under Wine. If you're unfamiliar with Wine, um, there is a pre-built version for Mac right here on Cronenberg's site. So you can grab one of those. So install that, and I went to the download page here. Just grabbed a 32-bit executable, uh, ran it, and it works just fine. So I, I fully expected to have to tinker with it and mess with a bunch of wine definitions and download DLLs and get everything tweaked, but it just ran out of the box, so I was thrilled about that. What FEM does is it lets you do 2D models of magnetic structures, including uh, you know, magnets and coils and uh, ferromagnetic and paramagnetic and materials and that type of thing. It lets you view the flux lines and see how the magnetic fields extend and respond around various other objects that happen to be passing through them. It is 2D, so it's somewhat limited. So what am I doing with magnetics modeling in a blog that is primarily music and music gear and software related? Well, right here. This is a view of a uh, exploded view of a pickup kit from Stuart McDonald that does, you know, luthier and guitar building supplies. This is for a humbucking pickup. So let's look at the basic theory of the vintage humbucking pickup. Um, this is kind of exploded, sort of a PAF, patent applied for original kind of Gibson humbucking pickup. You have uh, two bobbins that are, um, they are just coils of copper, and they tend to run them in series. And then the, uh, and those make for the sensing coils. The, the core is formed by various pole pieces. You have these pole piece slugs, which are just you know, mild steel or whatever, and then steel screws on the other side that are height adjustable. That varies from pickup to pickup, that's just the way that it is on here. So on the screw side, you have a, uh, a metal block that's your, your spacer that your um, screws pass through, and then they're threaded into the bottom plate, or they're threaded into block, or both, uh, depending on the pickup. Um, on the slug side, these sit flush on the top and bottom of the bobbin, they are non-adjustable. There is a non-magnetic shim of some kind underneath them. It's usually either plastic or wood. And then between them, you have a bar magnet. The um, polar orientation of the bar magnet is that these sides, the long sides over here and here, are north and south. So your flux passes this way. Um, your string, obviously when this is assembled, your string is going to be up here. The bar magnet um, magnetizes your pole pieces going through the coils, that in turn magnetizes the string, um, and then as the string vibrates, it varies the flux through the magnetic field and uh, produces a voltage through the sensing coils, which is then sent out to your amplifier. So you essentially end up with um, <clears throat> what looks like a, tri a rectangularly shaped um, flux path that goes from the magnet up through the pole pieces, through the string, back down the, the slug side and then back into the magnet, etc., etc., or the other way, I don't recall which. So we're going to plug a basic model of that. I'm going to show you how you can use FEM to, to model the flux fields just to see what's going on magnetically. It's fairly easy in the, the physical world to see what's going on um, physically, aptly enough. The coils are, are just treated just like inductors. So you have your uh, parasitic capacitance, you have your resistance of the windings, um, and you have your, your self-inductance. Um, the inductance can be measured if you know the dimensions of the bobbin and the amount of uh, 
windings or the the thickness of the the windings of the coil you you can calculate that just do the hand math or go online find a java calculator for inductor coils and you can calculate that pretty pretty easily the resistance can be measured with a with an ohm meter or it can be calculated if you know what what type of string the composition of the string usually usually the material for the coils is uh copper with um, copper magnet wire uh, at 42 or 43 gauge, sometimes higher for the uh, higher output pickup so they can fit more windings onto the bobbin. Uh, parasitic capacitance is a little bit sketchier. That depends uh, on the geometry of the winds and the coil as well as uh, the construction of the pickup uh, because it, as, but that, that can also be measured or just figured out with, with hand math. Um, if you have a scope that you can run some sweeps in, into the coil and you have a known resistance and capacitance, you can just see the frequency response, find the peak, and then calculate calculate the rest of it. Um, you could either solve for capacitance or solve for inductance, wh whatever. It's just like measuring a, the uh, parameters of an unknown transformer, which is fairly simple to do at home. Then, of course, you have the, the other physical problems where... Uh, uh, Proximity of various materials to the coil will produce changes in capacitance and inductance. Um, you know, if you have a, a, a large ferromagnetic plate underneath, that's going to affect your inductance along with the, uh, the changes in the magnetic flux. Um, if you have something like a pickup cover um, or uh, like insulating foil, things like that, you're going to increase the capacitance because you're, you're forming your little... Um, you know, your layers of dielectric material and uh, you're making little mini capacitors uh, all around it. So uh, that's going to affect that a little bit. Again, that, that can be measured and accounted for if you want down, if you want to get down to the nitty gritty of exactly how many picofarads of capacitance you have. But let's turn to the magnetic modeling. So once we have FEM installed, we can just start a new project. As you can see, I have this running under wine. And we're just going to make new right here, say magnetics problem, and I'll walk you through this. This is a bit of a it's a bit of a simple and limited program, but it gives us a good idea. Um, there are some instructions online. There's a lot of techno babble going in here. I'll try to keep it simple for um, and just pertaining to what we have to do. So we're going to select magnetics problem. And to start off with, here's our controls up here. So here's our nodes. These are to connect them. This is to set materials. Um, we have other things like here's our, our arch tool and that type of thing, our background grid. Um, we're not going to be using that right now. This is our solve button up here. This is to, to show our graphs. Uh, we have undo, curve tool, etc., etc., etc. We're going to use the simplest ones. Here's a zoom in, zoom out. This is zoom to fit, and then you can zoom in on an area there. We'll be using those quite a bit. Um, these are just to move your, you know, camera, whatever, around on the, the field. Here's our show grid, don't show grid, snap to grid, set grid size. So we are going to have snap to grid enabled, and we will set some points. So first thing we have to do is make our field. And this is going to be um, the area in which we're going to see the flux line. So we're just going to make that as big as possible so I have to worry about it. Uh, to connect these, you hit your, you hit your line tool, highlight one, click the other, and it draws the line. And again, and again and again. Now every time you have a, a plane you need to name the material. So we haven't made our materials library for this con for this project yet so we'll go into properties and then down to materials library and you can see they have folders full of materials you can add your own there are user submitted materials online you can also draw from. So I'll just grab some that we'll need. We're going to need air obviously so you grab that and drag it over here. For our PM materials, I'm going to pick Al Nico 5 for the magnet, um, aluminum nickel cobalt magnet. And you can see underneath that they have various other steels. I'm going to use 1010 for our steel. I don't think that's what's actually used, uh, but it is fairly ubiquitous, so we'll use that. It's good enough. 
just to look down at other useful things. You have laminated silicon here. That's a transformer irons. You have your, your Moo metal if you want to mess around with shielding. I'm going to draw that over just in case. You have your non-magnetic conductors. So I'm going to take a mild aluminum and a copper. Um, the only other things that I think uh, might be useful for us is nickel and um, steel. So our grid size is set up in quarter inch blocks. Um, a guitar pickup, we're going to be looking at the side profile. A guitar pickup is um, about an inch and a half across. So I'm just going to uh, set up some dummy points right here so we can count. Two, that's good enough. And then we're going to go about an inch high. Now these aren't, I'm not going to bother making them spot on. I'm just going to get us in the ballpark so I can show you how this works. I'm going to snap the grid size smaller. Let's make it an eighth of an inch. And we will draw our first object. So across the top here, I'm going to make a guitar string. Let me drop this down further and I'll pick just an intermediate width of string. 0 0.25, whatever. And then connect those. So now we need to draw our pickup. Uh, I've put about an eighth of an inch of distance between the top of the pickup and the string here. We'll find the middle of our pickup. So one, two, three, four, five. And we'll just stick a dot right there for reference. These are going to go away, but right now I just want them here to define our space parameters. Now our actual pole pieces, we're going to draw here. Then we have our material underneath. I'm going to make our active poles here. So the, the adjustable pole pieces will be here. So we have our iron underneath here, and then that's just a spacer underneath here, so we will leave that blank. And then we'll define our magnet underneath that. So um, the magnet is going to be in contact with the, the uh, steel bar and our spacer, and then here's the bottom of our pickup along here. Usually the um, the uh, the bottom plate of the pickups is nic nickel steel we or nickel silver we don't have to worry about that it's it's not going to affect our flux at all so I won't bother drawing it um, the copper coils that will be around here uh, they are also not magnetic I will not include those you could in a more complete model but let's draw these so here's our slug. Here's our magnet. Now the magnets vary in thickness. The thickness of this magnet is going to be an eighth of an inch. We'll define our adjustment block. Now the screw heads, we're going to zoom in a little bit more, change our grid size. I'm gonna go in a little bit more than that. Hopefully that's right. I'm doing this math in my head first thing in the morning. Now, deleting objects, I'm going to delete this so that I can draw the screw passing through that block like it does in real life. So you, you can left click on something and then shift cl left click on something else, click your undo there. You can also go down to um, edit, select region, and then select several objects and delete those as well. Now I'm just going to kind of guesstimate how far our screws are going to pass through the bottom. So that looks about good. Do that up at the top as well. And then I'm gonna draw a screw head on this. It's a real rudimentary. And then we play connect the dots. I don't know if you can hear that, but uh, the neighbors have decided to share some hip hop music with us. So I hope you enjoy that in the background. I don't. Now we'll draw the contact points for our adjustment block and fill in those lines.
All right, so now we have our pickup defined. What we need to do now is go through and define the materials. Um, our plane in the background here, if we select our materials tool, left click on that, and you see we have none, right click on it and hit your space bar. And then we can scroll through our materials. So this is going to be open air, click OK. I'm gonna turn our grid snap off and zoom in a little bit on our string. We're just gonna define that as plain steel. Zoom out. We'll define our magnet as Alnico 5, click OK. And you can set the direction of the flux. You can see zero, just sends it to the right. Send it to the left, it's 180. To send it up, it's 90. And then to send it down, it's minus 90. Actually, I'm gonna send the, I'm gonna change the direction of the flux there. And we're going to define... We'll define our pole piece as 1010 steel. Just define our screw as 1010 steel too. Oops, not moo metal. Definitely would not work right. And just define those as steel as well, cause why not? So there are all of our definitions. All right, now we have all our definitions. We have our bar magnet underneath. We have our slugs. We have our adjustable screw. We have our metal spacer base, our threaded base. We have our string across the top, and then we have our field of air in here. So we can go to click the little gear with the hand crank on it, and that'll run our analysis. And again, this is at DC just to see the flux. And then our spectacles will show us this. Very nice. Now you can make that a little fancier. This just shows us our flux lines, but we can go in here and show our flux density. Click OK, that gives us a pretty colored picture with a key over here so we can see the hot spots. And we can also go over here and set the density of our lines. Default is 19. We can show some more lines if we want, go up to 32. So that shows us our general lines of flux going on here. It's pretty much as we would expect. We have our, our flow over here like this. We can see that our screw side, since we have less metal going on here in the core, it's basically saturated by the magnet. Um, we have the lines of flux around the magnet. And then we have our lines of flux going up through the slugs, which is far less saturated because there's A, more material, and B, they're more loosely coupled. So all these parameters are going to affect the ultimate sound of the pickup. Um, how saturated the one core is related to the other, the relative strength of the two magnetic fields. Um, our humbucking effect is because of common mode cancellation between the two coils. So the more even they are and the more tightly the, the flux is coupled between the two, the more complete our common mode rejection is going to be, which means less hum in the end, but we can tinker around with the sound more if we imbalance them slightly, and uh, we can play around with that. Um, we can play around in this program with the height of the screw head. We can play around with the thickness and the materials of the slugs. <clears throat> we can make two, two slugs, we can make two screw heads, we can use various other things. Uh, you can simulate bar magnets or rods or whatever you have to. We can change the magnetic material to see what it does to the flux density. And we can play around with the geometries of the various materials that show us what it does to the electric field. Now you can see um, the pickup is, is uh, it's a very loose field. It's very leaky. Um, we're wasting a whole lot of our energy going down here. We're wasting it out to the sides. Um, all of these stray magnetic fields, those are going to pick up noise all, all around us. Obviously, we don't want that. So just to show you what the possible influences could be of other factors, um, let's say for argument's sake, we decide to put a eighth inch steel plate underneath our pickup, which is occasionally done. 
Firebird pickups, for instance, have a plate underneath. Telecasters do, although I believe that's copper. And we can see how that influences stray fields. It's going behind down here, and you can see they're redirected by the metal. Other things you might want to do, um, since we already have the outline of our pickup defined, we could go along the edge and see hypothetically what would happen if we added a steel enclosure to the entire thing. So let's just say we have a mild steel cover on our pickup. See how that influences a field. We have fewer fields out to the side, but we are saturating the bottom of it, robbing a lot of the magnetic flux down here. So we'll have a weaker field up top, but it'll be a much less noisy pickup. Obviously, the thinner the material, the easier it is to saturate. So we can adjust our flux that way, etc. etc. Now what this doesn't show is what these effects do in the uh, the electrical world. So um, if you are adding this cover on top, you're going to change both the inductance of the pickup and the capacitance, like we mentioned before. Also, you're going to change the inductance um, heavily if you add a large plate on the bottom, the, the capacitance to a lesser degree because we're further from the coils. But again, we're just looking at magnetic fields here in a very general two-dimensional way. And um, hopefully that gives you an idea. Like with everything else on this website, this is just to make the world a little bit better place. So if, uh, if some budding engineer has a, uh, has a bug to work on guitar pickups and um, they're looking for some free tools that they can mess around with the flux since that's an invisible thing in the physical world then hopefully this can help them out or if you just want to satisfy your curiosity you can plug in various pickup designs and see what they look like and try to figure out why they sound the way they sound